Hi, and welcome to this AutoVision Quick Start video. In this video, we will use AutoVision to develop a machine vision application in a few minutes. Let's start AutoVision. Now that AutoVision has started, we need to select the device. On this system, you can see an emulator and an F430F smart camera. We will select the smart camera for this application. In the connect view, you can click details to see the IP address and RS-232 settings. First, we need to create a new job. AutoVision will bring us to the image menu to let us adjust the focus and lighting settings. The easiest method to do this is to click on the auto calibration button. This will have the software set these parameters automatically for us. Once completed, I like to take another picture to confirm that everything looks correct. Now that we have a good image, click edit to add vision tools to the job. To the left of the image, is the tool list, which shows the tools present in this job. And it also shows the order of operation for these tools. We can see that the camera is already present. To the right of the image, we have the settings associated with these tools. For the current tool, we're going to change the trigger to sensor one. The first tool to insert is a locate tool. We're going to use this tool to find the Omron logo and represent, reposition the subsequent tools. The template is going to be resized around the Omron logo. And the locate shape one region of interest is the search window. Click the red train button to train this tool. Once trained, the ROI should be green and you should see this yellow outline around the perimeter of the object trained. In this application, we do not need the allowed rotation to be 180 degrees. So we're going to lower that, let's say to 20 degrees. This will speed up the inspection. Next, we will insert a decode tool to read the data matrix. This tool will be repositioned around the data matrix. You'll notice that for this tool, there is a green locate icon with a number one. This indicates that this tool is being repositioned by locate number one. We're also going to enable rotation for this tool. So let's set that now. Let's insert an OCR tool. We're gonna reposition this OCR tool around the lock code which on this code is one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see that the built-in font has automatically read this font correctly. We're also going to enable rotation for this tool. To compare 
the data matrix string to the lock code string, we're going to insert a match tool. In this tool, we need to set the input strings. For input string one, let's select the decode tool, decoded text. And for input string two, let's select the OCR read text. To count the number of gaskets present, we're going to use a count shape tool. Click on the count method and select shape count. This tool is trained like the locate tool. So we're going to reposition the template over one of the gaskets. and press the train button. We're going to resize this tool, or resize the count shape region of interest around both of the templates. We're also going to change a couple of the tool settings. We're going to change the fit quality to normal. And you can see that the second gasket has been found. We're also going to reduce the allowed rotation to 20 degrees, like the locate. And we're going to adjust the tolerance to count a minimum of two and a maximum of two. Next, the presence tool will be used to confirm the gasket tab position. Reposition this tool around the left tab. We're going to make it a little smaller so that the only thing that we're searching for is the tab itself. The pixels highlighted in orange are currently the pixels that are counted by this tool. So we need to set a tolerance such that the tool passes only when the tab is uh, present. We're going to increase this minimum pixel count to 400, and we will set the maximum to 1400. You can also see, looking at the tool, what the current pixel count is. We're going to enable rotation for this tool. And we're going to rename this tool as well. We can do that by clicking on the name and you can see that the text is highlighted. And we're going to call this left ab presence. To check the tab width of the right gasket, we're going to insert a width tool. This width measurement tool, we're going to resize and position so that we're only measuring the uh, tab. And you can see that it has found the left and right sides of the tab and is making a measurement. Currently, that measurement is 44 pixels in length. We're going to change the tolerance so that it passes again only on a good size tab.
So we'll set the lower tolerance to 30. And let's say the upper tolerance to 50. I'm going to enable rotation for this tool. And let's rename this tool as well. And I'm going to call it right tab width. The last tool that I'm going to insert in this job will be to detect the presence of the small holes in the gasket. So I'm going to insert a count tool. I'm going to use this as a count blobs and resize this over the four small holes in the gaskets. First, I'm going to need to change the polarity. So in this case, we're looking for light objects. So I'm going to change it to light on dark. And it has now found, you can see from the tool, that it has found four objects, which is great. We're going to set some size limits to ensure that the correct size um, holes are present. So let's set the minimum size to 1000 and let's set the maximum size to 10,000. We also need to change the tolerance so that it passes only when it counts exactly four holes. So my minimum count will be four and the maximum count will be four. We're also going to enable rotation. And let's rename this tool as well. Call it small holes count. So we've inserted the vision tools we're going to use in this application. Now we're going to click on inspection outputs to communicate the re inspection results to another device. In many applications, digital outputs are used to indicate that the inspection has passed. To configure, click digital outputs, and then clicking under output one, I'm going to link this output to inspection done. And change the pulse width for this to 20 milliseconds. For output two, I'm going to set this to inspection passed. And for output three, I'm going to set this to inspection failed. Now that all the vision tools have been inserted into the job, this is a great time to try all the tools. We're gonna click the try once button. This will run all the tools in the current vision job. And we can see that each of the vision tools has a green check mark to indicate that they have passed. It's also a good time to save the job. So I'm gonna to go to File, Save As, give it a name, save, and let's run the job. Since this is a triggered application, we're going to use this manual trigger button to send a trigger to the camera. I've triggered it a couple of times. You can see that from the counters that 
I've had two inspections and both inspections have passed. All of the vision tools are, are currently good and you can see that with the green check mark. Let's see what happens when we add our bad sample. I'm going to give it another manual trigger. We can see that this inspection failed. The OCR and the data matrix does not match and that caused the match string tool to fail. The count shape tool failed because it only counted one gasket. The left tab presence also failed because it did not see a tab on the left hand gasket. The right tab width measurement also failed because the tab is too narrow. And the small count a small holes count failed because it only found three holes that are the correct size. This concludes our AutoVision Quick Start video. Thank you for watching.